As he came closer, he discovered that this ship was flying a black flag. <gasps> she was a pirate ship! On ahead he spied the Primrose. The pirates were chasing her and closing in fast. Avast, you lovers! roared the pirate captain. Heave to or we'll blast your tongue to splinters! The devil take you! The captain of the Primrose roared back and he kept his ship going full sail. But there was no hope of outrunning the pirates and in less than a minute they caught up and pulled alongside. Then to the sea serpent's horror, the pirates opened fire! Twenty cannons exploded with a thundering boom blasting the masts of the primrose to splinters. The sails were blown to shreds and the yard arms came tumbling down. The scurvy sea dogs, snarled Cyrus the serpent. I'll fix the rascals, I'll shiver their timbers, I will. Quick as a flash, he dove deep into the sea, then wheeling sharply he shot straight up like a rocket, straight for the pirate ship. The serpent's hard head caught the ship square in the hull, Kawam! and she cracked apart like a nutshell. The ship was wrecked and so was Cyrus. He'd knocked himself out. His eyes were spinning like pinwheels and he sank below the waves as limp as an old shoestring. When he finally recovered and came to the surface, he was amazed to find nothing left of the pirate ship but bits and pieces. The pirates had scrambled aboard a fragment of the hull, dazed and bewildered, wondering what in the world had hit them. The crippled Primrose was drifting away to the south, with the passengers and crew crowded together on the deck. The captain and the crew had seen the giant sea monster destroy the pirate ship with one mighty blow, and they feared their ship would be next. If the monster doesn't get us, muttered the captain, we're done for anyway. There's still a whale of a long way to go and we can't move without sails. That old man was right, the one who made such a noise the day we left port. He predicted the voyage would end in disaster, remember? Who could forget him? Cyrus muttered to himself. He was right about the doldrums, the storm and the pirates, but he didn't figure on me, I just might prove him wrong. The serpent had slipped quietly up to the prow of the ship and was eyeing the anchor chain. Gripping the chain tightly in his jaws, he gave it a tug. He kept pulling until it was strung out to its full length, and all at once the ship lurched forward, bringing cries of terror from the people on board. It's the monster! The sea monster! He's stealing the anchor! No, 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 he's pulling us! He's hauling us off to his cave! He'll eat us alive! Hold it! roared the captain. How do you know but what he means to help? After all, if he hadn't wrecked the pirate ship, the devils would have slit our gullets. And look, he's taken us west. If he keeps going, we'll hit land, so let's all cool down and enjoy the ride.
Like a high stepping steed hitched to a fancy carriage, Cyrus galloped over the sea, picking up speed as he went. Never had a sailing ship travelled at such a fast clip. The serpent was anxious to get the trip over with and he kept the primrose going full tilt night and day without a letter. Finally one morning the lookout was shouting, Land ahoy! Land ahoy! Sure enough, moving over the horizon was a great stretch of land. At last, the perilous voyage was over. With one last burst of speed, Cyrus carried the primrose up on the beach, leaving it high and dry. Then with an enormous sigh of relief, he headed back out to sea. As he swam on his way, the captain and his crew and all the passengers were gathered on a huge rock, and they gave their sea serpent hero a rousing cheer. Exciting, said Cyrus, but I've had enough excitement to last for a while. What I need is a long, good rest. Heading south, the giant serpent wandered off into the Caribbean Sea, where he found a peaceful little island, and he settled down in the palm trees to sleep for a whole month. Cyrus was very tired indeed. <laughs>